Welcome back to Overkill Reviews. This week, the most anticipated metal album of 2016 and one of the most anticipated metal releases in many years. Metallica's brand new album, Hardwired to Self-Destruct, released today on their own label, Blackened Recordings. Now, I'm not gonna bother digging into a full history of Metallica. You all know the story. This is one of the most important bands in the history of heavy metal. However, it's been eight years since their last full-length release called Death Magnetic, which came out in 2008. And the band has been pretty busy since then. They were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They did a Lou Reed record. They released their own full-length dramatic film called Through the Never, and they even played on Antarctica. But the point of this show is to review albums. So let's get back to the music. Let's dig into Hardwired. The opening song in the album is the title track called Hardwired, and this is going to be no surprise for those of you who've paid attention to the songs that were released in advance of the album. It's pure thrash. Pretty clear right off the bat here that this is a leaner, more economical, much more thrashy Metallica out of the gate than we've seen in a long, long time. Yeah, I guess maybe Fuel had thrashy elements, but really it's been since, say, Blackened that we've had an opening song where thrash is the DNA. Then we get to the chorus. We're so fucked. Shit out of luck. So this is a real balls out chorus from Metallica from a band that's really been dwelling in that much more mid-tempo, dare I say, hard rock radio sound in recent records. And also Hetfield's voice is back up in the register, which of course will get the old schoolers' fists pumping in the air. Then we get the bridge. Kill them all, anyone? This song really has me hearkening back to some of those earliest tracks of Metallica, these stripped down single note riffs that we really haven't heard in a long, long time. And then Hammett delivers the high octane solo to take us out. Pretty classic Hammett there with those bluesy bands. Wow, no, no, but I'm wow, no, no. It's a nice start to an album, and there's a lot of skeptics out there on this band. So that's track one. Let's move on. The next track I want to dig into on Hardwired is called Moth Into Flame. Also, another pre release song from the record. And don't worry, we're going to get to new music. But this is a melodic Metallica that we also haven't heard in a long, long time. I feel like it's been a long time since we've really heard these big, epic, dueling guitar melodies courtesy of Hetfield and Hammond. And if the opening track was Kill Em All, this song feels much more Ride the Lightning title track, if you will. And the song gets even more melodic. What I'm hearing here is really Metallica's earliest influences coming through in the guitar melodies, making me think of Diamond Head or even Thin Lizzy. But then of course it moves into that familiar, more recent Hetfield vocal approach with the line, soldier soul built a higher wall, a real commentary on fame. And the song moves into an undeniably bluesy midsection. 
I think that's a really strong midsection to Moth Into Flame, and really overall this song is showing a lot of songwriting dynamics and great transitions that I also don't think we've seen from Metallica in a long time. And then the song finishes with a flourish. That section perhaps suggesting that Metallica has been paying attention to a lot of the metal around them in recent years. I'm thinking Volbeat there in that particular style of guitar harmony. And despite the fact that this song feels like it has three or four endings, could have ended maybe 30 to 60 seconds earlier, solid tune, Moth Into Flame. Let's move on. Okay, so let's get into some new music off Hardwired to Self Destruct. The next song I want to dig into is called Halo on Fire. And I forgot to mention at the outset that this album is actually a double album. Six songs on each record. And Halo on Fire is much more characteristic of most of the songs on offer. This is a big mammoth anthemic intro to Halo on Fire, and I think suggests to the listener that this is going to be an anthemic tune. But the band takes it in another direction. This is the dimension of Metallica's sound that has always polarized fans. Ever since Fade to Black on Ride the Lightning, there's always been a lighter side to Metallica. But I think Halo on Fire is much closer to an Until It Sleeps version of Metallica. And so fans of that period of the band will dig this track. And then in the chorus, Metallica returns to the theme that they established in the intro. Doesn't get more stadium friendly than this. This is obviously a crowd pleasing performance from Metallica on this chorus, and really will get the fists pumping and the heads banging at festivals and arenas around the world. However, I do worry that this is a band that started to equate quality songwriting solely with simplicity. I'm just as convinced that Moth Into Flame and Hardwired will rock those audience as well. In any case, by the middle of the song, the band does ratchet things up slightly to a much more black album feel. This song has me thinking wherever I may roam or enter Sandman with Return to Sender. We haven't heard that Jarl too much on this record so far. And then interestingly, at the end of the tune, they swing it back to the more melodic Metallica. So as Halo on Fire comes to a close, so does album one of Hardwired to Self-Destruct. And so far, it's really felt like six songs that are dipping into various elements of Metallica's past. We've had a little bit of Kill 'Em All, a little bit of Ride the Lightning, a little bit of Black Album, and even a little bit of Load Slash Reload. So let's move on to album two. Album number two of Hardwired opens with the song Confusion, a mid-tempo, very vocally driven 
track, but I want to dig into Man Unkind because it opens with something completely different. What we're hearing here is bassist Robert Tuijo finally coming to the fore in Metallica, and he has a co-writing song credit on Man Unkind. And it really had me thinking of Steve Harris and Dave Murray and Old School Maiden, or even more recently, a band like Baroness, who also happens to be part of Q Prime Management. In any case, where the song goes next has nothing to do with what we've just heard. This is big, crunchy stuff from Metallica, but by now on Hardwired to Self-Destruct, there's one thing that's really starting to stand out, and that's the drumming. There's several points throughout this album where the songs feel stagnant, a little stuck, because Lars's drumming really is not pushing or opening up the songs in any way. But by the middle of Man Unkind, the tune takes a much looser, groovier feel than we're used to hearing on recent Metallica records, perhaps courtesy of Tourijo's funk influences. And from there, the song moves into one of the rare, odd time signature moments on the record, which really is a welcome change from what we've heard so far. But again, I can't help but think that the drumming is holding things back ever so slightly. Chaos awaiting for Adam's return. Madness spiding as we watch it burn. I've become hostage to my mind. Now at its core, I think this is a really cool idea. It takes me back to almost Call of Cthulhu, or maybe Rush, or Deep Purple. There's something progressive and off-kilter here. But after a while, it does start to feel a little bit same-same. The one highlight, I think, is the vocals. And this is cool. Fascinate. I think what this section of Man Unkind really made me realize is that James Hetfield is one of the strongest elements of modern Metallica, both vocally and lyrically. The songwriting, however, by this point in the album is really starting to feel redundant. Lots of mid-tempo songs, lots of blues scale oriented riffs. I'm reaching for something more dynamic, more exciting, and something different. Let's move to the last song. The final song on the second album of Hardwired to Self-Destruct is called Spit Out the Bone. And just at the moment you thought that Metallica had abandoned Thrash altogether, they hit you with this. The crushing thrash feel is back from Metallica, really showing that yes, they can do this. And coming next is the best riff on the whole damn record. absolutely love this riff on this album and it really makes me think of Damage Incorporated and maybe that was the plan all along. This album was going to be bookended by two thrash tunes. In any case, this chorus makes me think, am I in a skate park in 86? Come to me and you will feel perfection. Come to me and dedicate. Come to me you'll never be rejection. This is pure, beautiful thrash from a band that helps start this style of music. And then next thing you know, it's a distorted bass riff. R.I.P. Cliff Burton.
Full disclosure, I'm a bass player, so I can't help but love those moments where metal bands find creative ways to put bass in the front of the song. And then we get even more melody. Does this song just keep getting better? Check this out. Metallica perhaps paying homage to Iron Maiden there, but I think they do it well. And let's not forget that Metallica's been around almost as long as Maiden has, at least in terms of their recorded era. But by song's end, they bring it back to pure thrash. So there you have it. As Spit Out the Bone comes to an end, thus also ends the album Hardwired to Self-Destruct. Nearly 80 minutes worth of music has come to a close. Let's go to the verdict and weigh in on the most anticipated metal album of 2016. So, at the risk of overthinking this, reviewing a Metallica record is no easy task. So I've decided to take a slightly different approach here how to review the Metallica record. Do we weigh it against the back catalog? Do we weigh it against younger metal bands? Or you could review it against other metal legends because we are talking about one of the biggest bands of all time. The other thing is, if you're a metalhead, this is a very psychological and emotionally taxing task because we can all remember the first time we heard Metallica. For me, it was on cassette, Ride the Lightning. I'll never forget hearing Fight Fire with Fire for the first time. It blew my mind. Anyway, let's get to Hardwired to Self-Destruct. What are the pros? Okay, I think the pros are the vocals are extremely strong on this record. Hetfield is still carrying his weight as one of the great metal frontmen. Secondly, the guitar work on this record is phenomenal and we haven't heard guitar melodies and guitar harmonies like this from Metallica in a long, long time. And third, there is some very, very potent thrash on this record. Three songs in particular are going to make a lot of old school Metallica fans very, very happy. And so what are the cons? Well, first off, I think Lars's drumming is holding back some of these songs. And secondly, I felt that the songs held a lot of promise in the intros, a lot of big epic intros or just very interesting beginnings to the songs, but then the songs just fell flat and quite often ran on far too long. Now the complicating factor here is that in my opinion, three songs on this record are three of the best songs that this band has put out in roughly 25 years. The title track, Moth Into Flame, and spit out the bone. Now, there's gonna be a lot of you out there who are gonna say, oh, Sam's just an old school thrasher, he just likes the fast stuff, but I stand up for the fact that these are stronger songs from a songwriting perspective, and this is Metallica at their best. And at the end of the day, this is an album review show, and the other nine songs on the record just don't live up to what Metallica is capable of doing. Okay, so, we gotta get to the skull rating. Let's get back to the chart here. Against their back catalog, hardwired, not strong in my opinion. If we weigh it against slightly younger metal bands, I'm thinking Opeth, Gojira, Lamb of God, don't think it really matches up. However, I will give them, compared to other metal legends still putting out original music, which is very rare, I will add, this is a strong record. So. One out of three there, but for a skull rating, I give Hardwired to Self-Destruct two and a half skulls out of five on Overkill Reviews.